Hello and welcome. So today I'm joined by a very good friend of mine. Uh, she's also a coach just as I am. And she she is the author of this amazing book, How to Cre How to Design Your Career Game Plan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Coletta is joining me today. And we are going to talk about her story, which is really interesting because she's been to five countries. She's worked in five countries. She has 25 years experience. And her story is really interesting. And today we'll delve into her adventure, how she actually found out her purpose you know through the through her, her career story so this is the peculiar people where we create content that helps you to optimize your decisions so you can enjoy your career your relationships and your leadership Coletta Masharia. Here she is, people. Finally, we are here. And Coletta, it's great to have you. Uh, I'm happy to have you on, on set uh, here and uh, looking forward to hear your, your story. So let's dive into it. Um, I mean, you have 25 years of experience in different fields and we want to know how you move from one field to another. And we'd also like to know your experience in five different countries. Yeah. So what's your story? So tell us your story so we can learn from it. Great, thank you very much, Victor. I am glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And yes, my story um, starts from many years ago when I wanted to be an accountant. Uh, that was my career of choice. And uh, I enjoyed principles of accounts in school and I, you know, liked math and stuff like that. So I thought, well, accountants are people who I think will always have jobs. You know, that was my thinking then as a young girl. And so I went into CPA, studied, and at some point I switched to ACCA. And by this time I was uh, working for an international organization. And then um, my husband got moved to, or rather, he got an opportunity to go work in West Africa. And so we had already decided a long time ago that if such an opportunity ever came, we would weigh the pros and cons and, um, you know, the, we would move. Okay, so the opportunity presented itself and we were happy. I was happy to accompany my husband to his um, uh, new position. So, and, um, just allow me to ask a follow-up question there, because mm -hmm. you, you said that you made this decision with your husband. Yes. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, for people who are maybe new couples, is that something that they should consider as they're looking at their careers? I certainly think it's important because, you see, when you get married, it's it's a marriage of two people with dreams, with visions, with ideas of how they want their lives to be, all right? And so it's important to discuss these and, you know, talk about where you see yourself in your career and, and start finding ways of, you know, how do we support each other? How do I support his dream? And how does he support my dream? So I think it helps to think about such things and to discuss them and to sort of do some what if analysis kind of things, you know? So we, we used to talk about it, like, you know, what if you got a job in XYZ place? Uh, what we do we do then? And then, you know, we used to think, okay, so first of all, the job um, must pay enough so that if one of us has to leave, then we don't have to worry too much about finances. And then um, <clears throat> think about, you know, what would that look like in future when we have children? So we used to talk about this even before we, we had kids. So I hope I've answered that sufficiently. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So going back to, to my story. So, so yes, we made the decision and um, off we went to Burkina Faso. Uh, so yes, I left my job as an accountant and I was at that time in the middle of my ACCA studies and uh, with two little children, uh, five years, uh, was it uh, yeah six years and about 11 months and um, so yeah so we went and started uh, life anew so in my mind we were just gonna settle down and then I was gonna learn French because this was a francophone country Burkina Faso and I'd been advised by one of my colleagues who was Burkinabe he had told me you know what um, when you go to Burkina Faso you're gonna love it and because you have a finance background uh, all you need to do is learn French and then you'll become a hot cake so I had this at the back of my mind. We'll just settle down and learn French and then I'll become a hot cake. So uh, getting there, I mean, of course, the reality, you know, you face culture shock and, uh, you know, you thought you knew a few words of French. You realize that really when people speak, it just 
sort of passes you and so you really have to take your time and learn uh, the language and um, you know settle the kids and you know just ensure that um, my husband is all right everything is taken care of in terms of just whatever support you know women give to their families and so um, after about six months uh, I started formal uh, French classes uh, before that I was doing um, lessons in the house with a tutor who came to our house but then at some point my friend and I I met a Kenyan lady there and we decided let's go to Alliance Francaise and let's actually learn French and get certificates you know uh, we thought getting a certificate is a big thing so so we did that and then I kept applying for jobs and um even knocking on doors you know just to ask do you guys need an accountant i'm here and i know a bit of french bonjour comment ça va and um of course it was a little uh french <laughs> and um so yes i searched and then with each passing day it dawned on me that this search it was you know it was getting long and it was not bearing fruit and um i started to get a bit restless uh, because again, remember, I was in the middle of my ACCA studies, and this is a francophone country, and they do not have any colleges where ACCA is taught. Uh, there is no exam center, and so I have to think. So, so what happens now? What what do I do? Uh, and remember, I still have this idea of you know growing my career as an accountant. So I was at such a crossroads and getting a bit frustrated. Um, but then I decided, you know what? It's okay. Don't just look at what you've lost, aka you know my job, my you know support system back home, and like a path that I could see my my career moving to. But think about what you've gained. Here you are in this place. You are meeting lots of people. You are learning um, new language. You're interacting with cultures because you know we we had an international community where my kids went to school. And um, so when I started to look at it this way, and then I thought, hey, and I get to spend time with my young kids. I don't have to worry about, you know, do I have enough leave days to attend uh, to, only the older one was in school at the time, like to attend to his school uh, programs and things like that. So I was available. And it, you know, when I started looking at it that way and being grateful and appreciating the positives that came with it, I think my, my heart started to lighten up. And it was at that time that I started asking myself, okay, so they may not need accountants, and maybe it's not yet time for me to be that hot cake, but what else can I do? And I started to just look around and see what needs are presenting themselves. And I didn't have to look far. One Sunday in church, I realized that, you know, there was a lot of talking, people were talking around me, and later on I asked someone, what was happening? Why were people just talking when the pastor was preaching? And he said to me, uh, you know, it's the people who understand English who are translating to uh, the ones who do not. And um, so this was an international church and the congregation was mixed. Um, so <clears throat> we had that diversity. And then I thought, wait a minute. So the pastor is preaching. I am getting the message and then I give it to you, which means that I'm kind of just hearing part of it. And so you're gonna get the part of it and you're gonna get the translated version, which may already be missing so many things. And after that service, I went to the pastor and I said, you know what, people are translating to one another in the middle of the service. What if we started an English class? We started teaching English here so that people can get the someone firsthand for themselves. I said, that's a brilliant idea, run with it. And I said, huh. So, come the following Sunday, he makes an announcement in church. Oh, our sister Coletta is gonna start an English uh, class, so if you're interested, sign up. Guess what, after the service, we had like over 30 people coming and saying, I wanna learn English. Now I was mortified, because I don't know what I thought when I said this to the pastor, honestly. And even though before going to Burkina, I had, the idea had crossed my mind. This is a Francophone country. There might be an opportunity to teach English. And so I had bought a couple of grammar books, interestingly, and they were in my suitcase. And so at this point, now I have the opportunity, I have all these people coming, and I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. And I had never taught before. So I said to my husband, guess what? This thing is gonna collapse. I have no clue where to begin. <laughs> and I 
and I, I'm saying this to him on our way from church. Now this is the Sunday after I spoke to the pastor and he has made an announcement in this service. And, and so we had given uh, a ride to a lady uh, in our car who was a colleague of my husband. So we're gonna drop her somewhere. So she overheard this conversation and she said, uh, so, so what's the problem? And I said to her, you know, there are people who are like complete beginners. And then there are those who understand a bit of, of English. They, they want to make it better. So I said to her, I think I can handle those ones who know a little bit, but the complete beginners, I really don't know how to help them. She said, I can take the, the class so we can have two classes. I do the beginners and you do the, you know, we called it intermediate. And I thought, Wow, that's an answer to prayer right there. Yeah. So it turns out this lady, she was a Peace Corps volunteer. She had been teaching English in some village as a second language. And um, so she was comfortable. And then she had also learned some local dialects and, and she was good in French. So even if you were a beginner, she could sort of, you know, like meet you where you are and work with you. And I said, this is God sent. And she had a lot of material, you know. So we worked together. Of course, you know, my two books that I had bought uh, for English grammar. And then a lot of help from BBC. I just went to their website and I started looking at, you know, teaching English, how to make lesson plans, how to do this and this and that. And so we created right there uh, a curriculum and we used it to teach English. So all this is part of my story of how I started discovering different things that I could do that, you know, to meet needs, immediate needs that were there, instead of looking at, okay, I'm an accountant and I'm looking for a job as an accountant. And so that helped me to start seeing myself as, hey, you can do something else. It doesn't have to be accounting. And so when I saw that was meeting a need and when I saw <coughs> how people started to see themselves, I felt really fulfilled, encouraged, and inspired. And, and part of the reason is that to encourage conversation and to encourage people to um, sort of be comfortable reading and speaking, I had brought in uh, the book I was reading at the time, it was The Purpose Driven Life, and you'll understand this book, it just had such an impact on me. Uh, so I, I thought, you know what, why don't we use this as our text? You know, we can use it for discussions, people can read a chapter, we discuss it and, you know, see what language skills are coming out of there. And I realized that people are not only getting the language, they are also now realizing things like, oh wait, and this is what one guy asked. After reading, instead of telling God how big your problem is, tell your problem how big your God is. That was, you know, I'll never forget this. So he reads that and he pauses and he says, wait. So you want to tell me I can speak to my problem? <laughs> and I realized, you know, we are killing two birds with one stone here. You know, we are helping people to grow in a different way, get new perspectives, and we are also helping them to master language skills. So that was now the English part, and that's how I ended up, uh, you know, uh, teaching English in, in Burkina Faso. And then when we went to Burundi, I continued, but, you know, like one-on-ones, um, uh, just helping people. Uh, Francophone people learn English as a second language. I did that privately and you know with just a few people. Um, so yeah, so that's that's part of the story. That's part of the stuff that I did. And then on the side, as I was teaching English, I was also part of a Bible study that um, met uh, in one of our friends' houses, and. I got an opportunity, I was asked one time to prepare to speak in the next Bible study and I thought to myself, what am I going to tell these people? Most of them are missionaries, they've devoted, they've left their countries, they've devoted their lives to serving the Lord and I'm supposed to be giving them the word. So I thought to myself, what, what can I possibly speak to these ladies? Um, and as I was thinking, it occurred to me, you know what, just tell them what's happening in your world. Like, bring your world to them and tell them what, what you're learning and what it is that you're grappling with right now and who knows where that will lead. And, and what was happening in my world at the time, so remember, I'm an ACCA student. So even though there is no exam center or, or college that's offering ACCA, I am studying privately. And at that time, I had decided I was going to travel to Kenya to go and sit um, exams in Kenya, you know, during the exam season, which was June and December. 
And so I was doing um, a business paper at the time. And so, you know, just thinking about businesses and the importance of having a vision and a mission. And I, and I thought, if this is so important for a company, which is an artificial person uh, created by the law, how much more important is that for us as human beings who are real people created in the image of God? We need a vision and we need a mission. And, and so I'm reading, you know, I'm thinking about this as I'm reading my, for, for, for my exam, okay? And then on the side, remember The Purpose Driven Life, the book? I'm reading that and um, this guy is talking about a purpose and a mission. And I started to put these things together. And I had just finished reading um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which also talks about the importance of having a personal mission and vision. So, you know, these things started falling into place. And so I say, this is what I'm going to bring to the Bible study because I think it's fascinating. And guess what? I brought it to the Bible study. And it's just interesting how, you know, everybody resonated. And, and, and people are thinking, wait a minute, we've been thinking about the vision and mission of our mission, you know, the mission that sent us here yeah. and what we're going to do when we get there, how we're going to serve God. But we've never really sat down to think, what about me? What's my mission? What's my vision? Yeah. So it just struck a chord with them. And so I realized, wait a minute, I was very unsure of coming to speak to these ladies. And even in that state of being unsure, I brought what was happening in my world and we discussed it and people resonated and, and many of them were asking me, okay, give me your notes, which book did you refer to which, you know, and so I shared my notes with them and I started now to realize that there's something in there, there's something about helping people to, you know, get some skills or get some perspectives and I started putting, you know, seeing a pattern. So that opportunity at my Bible study gave birth to another opportunity to speak to, you know, another group of women in my church and on and on. And so I started to see myself now being in those spaces where I was supporting other people. And even though I'm still studying accounting, I'm realizing that, wait, this is actually more fun. <laughs> you kind of see immediate results. You kind of see people now beginning to have you know, to be inspired and to have hope and to do things. So I, I, I kind of, you know, took note of that. And, um, and and then remember, I'm also learning French. And so as I'm learning French, I'm also getting um, um, a bit more experienced in it and a bit, a little bit confident to speak it, but not confident enough for my friend Felicity. Uh, because, um, you know, she used to nudge me and say, you know, uh, you speak well, you, you seem to have a flair for, for, for the language, but I don't know why you're not confident to speak it. And you should even think about uh, doing some of the translations because, um, so now my friend Felicity is Francophone, all right? Um, but she, okay, she, originally she was, she's Francophone, but she has uh, learned English and she's also good at it. Um, so she's bilingual, but then she finds herself more comfortable with French and she's a translator okay so she translates and her her comfort zone is english to french okay and so she said you know i think translating french to english would be something that you know you could get into and uh, you would do a good job <coughs> and i said um well i don't know about that i don't know if my french is good enough uh to to translate and she said you wait um we'll see so one day she comes to my house and she says, I have this document that I need translated. It's very urgent and I don't have time to sit and chat. So here is the document. And once you do it, I'll pay you at, you know, the, the rate that, you know, I normally pay translators. And I said, oh my gosh, I need to return this document because I don't know, I don't think I can do this. Um, but then I also like a good challenge.